P-O-S-T! P-O-S-T, Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Day Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Buckaroos, I'm real particular about what I recommend because I know the fellow who lends his name to just any old thing soon loses his friends. But I'm telling you this, you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post because Post cereals are good. So get your mom to put some on the shelf and try them, won't you? Well, sir, we're about rid of Don Wallace who runs that hangout for criminals in Mineral City. He's wanted on a serious charge up north, and the authorities are sending a man down to get him. He should be on the trail here right now. Oh, boy. Hey, hey, Fred. Look up there, that that mountain trail. Hey, he must have lost his mind driving at such a speed. He ought to know better than to drive a car on a narrow trail like that. If he takes one curve too fast, Johnny goes a hundred feet... Hey, Fred, he's gone over the edge. Yeah. Well, let's get on to Don Wallace's place before the law gets us. Wait a minute, Fred. Bank messengers, cattle buyers, people carrying big rolls of money use the mountain trails a lot. Might pay us to ride over and see if that hombre was carrying anything we can use. Guess we wasted our time, eh, Bruce? Maybe not. That paper important? It's a warrant for the arrest of Don Wallace. The Don Wallace we know? The one in Mineral City? Yeah, this hombre here is a law officer. He was on his way to get Wallace and take him back up north for trial. It must be Wallace is under arrest in Mineral City, then. We better keep away from there. He can't protect us if he's in bed with the law himself. Yeah, no, hold everything, Fred. With this badge and these papers, we might be able to do Wallace a favor and ourselves, too. Yeah. There's no reason why I can't be this guy and pick up Wallace myself. Mm, That's risky. It's worth a risk. You wait here while I make the try. I think this is what we wanted for a long time. I don't mind telling you we'll be glad to get rid of this man, Wallace. Well, we're just as glad to get our hands on him, Sheriff. We've been looking for him for a long time. Yeah. Want to sign this paper? Mm, well, what? The receipt for the prisoner. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Better start back with him as soon as I can. I know you won't mind that, will you? All right, pull up your horse, Wallace. What's the idea? Pull up your horse, I said. Oh, boy. Are you the law or not, if you are? Get off your horse. Sure. Fred? Fred, where are you? Right here. Now, come on, I got him. What is all this? You can't take as long as I thought it would. Now, Wallace, my name is Bruce. Leslie Combs Bruce the third. Bruce? What you say? This is Fred Popper. Fred? But I got word about you boys. I was to hide you out for six months. So instead, we're hiding you out. Yeah, you're free, Wallace. We're not the law at all. We pulled a fast one on the law. Boy, he's <laughs> <a> boy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest thing that ever happened. I was to do you a favor. Well, yeah, maybe you can still do us a favor, Wallace. How? Well, we'd like to make a deal. How can I turn you down? Well, now, you're free, but you can't go back to Mineral City. I can't even stay in Paradise Valley. Well, suppose Fred and I was to take over your place and run it. Why, uh... Nobody's going to bother us there. Nobody knows us. We could run it and send you a share of the profits. You won't be doing any of the work, Wallace, or taking any of the risks. And you got your freedom. That sounds fair enough. Well, let's shake on it, then. 
Now, you take another name and let us know where you are so we can send you your cut. Address us at your place. <laughs> Paradise Valley breathes a sigh of relief now that Don Wallace is gone. But two men, Fred Pappert and Leslie Bruce, move in and produce a bill of sale to show that Don Wallace's place is theirs. No one disputes them, and the place continues to be a hangout for criminals. Fred Pappert and Leslie Bruce do, however, make one mistake. They move into the Eureka Hotel, Dale's Hotel, and attempt to conduct part of their business from there. about you having trouble, Dale. Yeah, now, now, Dale, uh, this ain't something that'll take long, is it? I'm pretty busy today. <laughs> Jonah has to get his saber sharpened and his medals polished, Dale. An old girlfriend is going to call on him. Honest? Now, <laughs> Roy Rogers, you're bearing false witness. You're just well, a saying... Well, why does he have to sharpen his saber? Is he going to skin her? Probably. <laughs> yeah. No, now, 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 just a second here. Gloria ain't an old girlfriend of mine at all. Gloria? Yeah, Gloria H. Hanrahan. Gulp and glory, we called her. <laughs> yeah, and at one time, she was General Thomas Kenneth Rowe's sweetheart. Oh, I tell you, she was a pretty little thing. Mm -hmm. Blonde as a white leggern pullet and dainty as a hummingbird. Well, why is she coming to see you, Jonah? Well, <clears throat> next Thursday's Thanksgiving. I say next Thursday's Thanksgiving, Dale. <laughs> and every year, I make a practice of cooking up a turkey and sending it to my old general. Sort of sentimental, you know. Oh, nice. Uh, this year I heard Gloria was in the neighborhood, so I thought it'd be appropriate to have her deliver it. Uh, you're all right, Jonah. Oh, my goodness. They used to have great times together. <laughs> Somebody from the regiment would kill a buffalo for, for food, you know, and them two would just sit down together on a log, him so brave and her so dainty, and say her so dainty, mm -hmm. and they'd eat their supper there, the general always having a steak and Gloria a whole hind leg. Of a buffalo? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had quite an appetite. That's why we called her Gulp and Gloria. <laughs> and then after supper, they go out... Dale, what was it you wanted to see us about? Oh, boy, them was the times. Well, it probably isn't very important, Roy, but those two men who took over Don Wallace's joint moved in here. Oh, and ever since, there seems to be owl hoots all over this place. Fred Pappert and Les Bruce, you mean? Well, why don't you just tell them to break camp and get out? Well, I did, and they just laughed at me. Laughed at you, huh? Well, we can attend to that right now. Howdy, Sheriff. Howdy, Dale. My deputy around anywhere? Howdy, Roy. Howdy, Jonah. Sheriff. Howdy, Tin Star. Well, no, I haven't seen him, Sheriff. Well, if he comes in, tell him I'm riding the trail between here and Squaw Creek. Roy, if uh, you and Jonah aren't busy, I'd like to have you come along. What's up, Sheriff? Don Wallace and the officer who came for him never got back to Placer Gulch. What? Well, how could that be? They disappeared. Nobody's heard from either of them since they left. I'm to cover the trail between here and Squaw Creek. Well, if you'll wait one minute, I'll go with you, Sheriff. There's a little job upstairs that needs to be done, but it won't take long. Well, I better go along, Roy. You wait here, Jonah. This is something I want to do myself. Well, who's there? Open up and find out. I don't like that kind of talk. And I'm not used to taking it. Uh, you Les Bruce or Fred Pappert? Uh, who wants to know? Rogers is my name. <laughs> Roy Rogers, I suppose. That's right. Where's your partner? I want to talk to you Get both. outside. Nobody told you you could come in here. You need some help, Bruce? Uh, there won't be any trouble unless you start it. All I came up for was to tell you that Miss Evans needs this room for other guests. We like it here, Rogers, and we intend to stay. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to help you pack right now. Uh, that's what you think you're up to. <laughs> Fred lunges, catching Roy on the jaw. Roy staggers, and as he does so, Bruce comes forward, swinging with the right and the left. Roy has his back against the wall and takes several more blows before he sees open. Then Roy delivers a straight lift that catches Fred square in the mouth. Fred goes down. Roy wheels. He goes after Bruce. His fist cutting, driving, pounding. Bruce is staggering. Bruce is down. Now get yourself together. Get all your stuff together and check out. Uh, you won't have time to pack. Just throw your clothes over your arm and carry them out that way. Uh, You've got to give us a chance to pack, Rogers. We, we don't even know where we're going. Take your things across the street to that place you're operating over there. You can... Hey, wait a minute. Uh, what do you want? What's that sticking to the shirt you just picked up? Looks like a lawman's badge. 
Roy steps toward Fred to take the shirt. Fred, don't let him get his hands on that shirt! Fred hesitates. He looks about wildly. Roy is between him and the door. There's only one possible means of escape. The window. He jumps through to the street below. Bruce follows. Hold it! Stop where you are! Roy draws his gun, shoots over their heads, hoping to stop them. The two men don't hesitate. They head straight for Don Wallace's place. Their own place now, where they know they have friends who will protect them. Roy races down the stairs to the lobby. Come on, Sheriff. Jonah, over to Don Wallace's old place. What's the matter, Roy? I'm right with you, Roy. What was all the shooting for? They've got a lawman's badge. And a man who controls Al Hoot from where a lawman's badge is too dangerous to be running loose. I'm sure lots and lots of you folks are already enjoying new crinkles often for breakfast. Because that unique sugar-coated flavor makes crinkles the one really different rice cereal. Mmm, candy-kissed rice. It's twice as nice. But say, how about crinkles whenever you're hungry, after work or play, any time? Crinkles are one swell snack. As Roy Rogers' old pal Jonah often says... Crinkles? Well, I always keep a box handy right in my saddlebag. Never know when I'll want a handful of crinkles. Or do I? <laughs> sure, right now. Mmm... Candy kissed rice. It's twice as nice. I say, candy kissed rice is twice as nice. Yes, for breakfast and snacks, the whole family will have a circus eating crinkles, the new rice cereal that's sugar coated. So don't be caught short. Get several boxes of new crinkles tomorrow. Look for the red, white, and blue package with the crinkles clown right on the front. Okay? Don Wallace was delivered to a man identifying himself as a law officer from another state. Nothing more was seen of either the officer or Wallace. About this same time, two men took over Wallace's old place of business and moved into the Eureka Hotel. They refused to leave when Dale asked them to do so. Roy went to their room, saw a lawman's badge on one of their shirts. The two men, knowing that the stolen badge would be identified if Roy got his hands on it, leaped from the window and raced across the street toward Don Wallace's place. Roy, Jonah, and the sheriff are after them. Jonah, sheriff? Yeah, right with you, Roy. This is my fight. Stay behind me. Stay behind you? What do you think I am, a colonel? All right, Bruce, where are you? Come on, Pappert, show yourself. Is that the sheriff with you, Rogers? Mm, that there sounds like a peace field, Roy. It's the sheriff! And I'm with Rogers all the way. I'm glad you're here, sheriff. We'll save us going out to look for you. We want Rogers locked up for assault and battery and for attempted murder. I've seen you somewhere before, Bruce. Uh, of course you have, right here in Mineral City. Fred Pappert and I dickered with Don Wallace two months before we took over this place. Now, come on, get this man out of here. We're preferring charges against him. I'll have to do it, Roy. Yes, he will. Now, listen, you tin-starred lawman. You try to take Roy Rogers to jail, you'll feel the cut of my saber. Stand out of the way, General's boy. I'll charge you down. I say, I'll charge you down. Lay your dirty fist on Roy, and I'll ride right on over you. Well, that's enough, Jonah. Well? Let's not put the sheriff in an embarrassing position. Come on, Sheriff. I'm ready. All right, Roy. So nobody can beat you, huh, Rogers? You always come out on top. Well, maybe you got that reputation because you never happened to meet up with us before. But you've met up with us now. Oh, poo. I say poo, poo, poo. The sheriff leads Roy away, takes him to the sheriff's office just as he would anyone else. Roy is to be charged with attempted murder, assault, and battery. Jonah follows, and a moment later, Dale joins them. What is it, Roy? What happened? He's gone and arrested Roy. Oh, Sheriff, you didn't. Don't worry about it, Dale. Bruce made the complaint. I have to prefer charges, but there's nothing that says I have to be in any hurry about it. I'm so dead right at mad I could spit butter beans. Well, Roy, why did you make so much fuss about a lawman's badge? What lawman's badge? Well, they've got one, and they jumped out the window to keep me from getting it. But why make such a fuss about it? Those owl hoots aren't entitled to a badge, Dale, so it must be stolen. If they stole it, they must be using it unlawfully. Yeah, Roy, we ain't through yet. I'll keep fighting whether you're free or not. I'll fight everybody, even including old Shuckbrain here. Now, uh, Jonah. Uh, what about your lady caller, though? 
Huh? Oh, Gulp and Glory? Well, she won't mind waiting for me. Besides, I waited two whole days for her once when General Rowe was supposed to go off on an inspection tour and didn't. <clears throat> Roy, <laughs> I'll get the badge away from them, too, even if Glory and the General both are mad at me. Well, thanks, Jonah, but uh, I'm afraid there's not much use going back to the hotel. They pulled this trick so they'd have time to get rid of the badge, and their trick worked. We'll just have to wait. Roy is right. He's guessed exactly what is in the minds of the two outlaws. Even at this minute, they're meeting in the back room of Don Wallace's place, making important decisions. We should never have kept the badge, Bruce, or the papers either. I know we shouldn't, but I thought they might come in handy again sometime. Those hombres will be back. From what I hear about Rogers, he never gives up. We'll get rid of the badge and the papers tonight. We'll take them out and put them with the guy who had them before we did. The lawman who was killed, sure. Why, that'll clear us, too, in case anybody ever finds him. Well, stick the badge and the papers here in the safe till after we're closed tonight. We'll come back when everybody in town is asleep, about midnight, say. We'll get rid of them then. A few hours later, Roy is free on bail. He and Jonah are in the hotel lobby with Dale, making plans for their next move. Yeah, where'd that, where'd that lapdog hound called Sheriff go? The sheriff is riding toward Squaw City, looking for the trail of Don Wallace and the lawman who disappeared with him. Yeah, just use that as an excuse, because he thought I was going home to get my saber. Tell you the truth, I'm kind of glad he's gone. Oh, afraid I'd slash him to pieces, huh? No, but uh, I figure on looking for that badge, and he, he might not like the way I go about it. Won't uh, Fred Pappert and Les Bruce have thrown it away by now, Roy? Well, maybe not. They've probably hidden it in Don Wallace's place somewhere. A badge can be useful to outlaws. Yeah, but it'll be pretty hard to get at it there. The place always has a lot of men hanging around. Well, not after midnight. Roy, you're not going to break in, are you? Oh, Roy, that's burglary. You're playing right into that old shuck brain sheriff's hands. Are you afraid, Jonah? No, only for you, Roy. I just don't want nothing to happen to you. Not for my own sake, neither, but, but for the sake of all the folks that need you and the folks who look up to you. Well, thanks, Jonah. Roy, I don't believe you've ever had a nicer compliment. Well, we'll get this job done and safely, too. Uh, what if we do have to take a chance? It's worth a chance to make a wrong right. The darkness of midnight settles over Paradise Valley. Two men on horseback come through the alley behind the old Wallace place. Both are alert and watchful. When they arrive at the back door, they stop, get off their horses. They are Roy Rogers and Jonah Wilde. The neighborhood is awesomely quiet. They walk to the door, stand for a moment to reassure themselves. We're all right, Jonah. Yes, I hope Dale's out front like she's supposed to be, ready to whistle if anybody comes up. She is. Let's force this door. Roy has a small steel bar in his hand. He inserts it between the door and the jam beside the lock. He pries. The door opens. Come on, Jonah. Better shut the door, though, in case somebody comes through the alley. Yeah, you know, I used to do lots of this kind of work when I was a scout for the Army and after the Indians. Mm. Indians. Indians didn't have no squeaking hinges on their doors, though. The safe. We'll look there first. It's the most likely place. Here we are. I'll see if I can work the lock on the safe. Uh-huh. It kind of makes goosebumps go up and down my spine. On the inside, that is. Well, uh, just think about that turkey you're going to send to General Kenneth Rowe. Hey, listen. Outside, at the front of the building, Dale whistles the warning signal to Roy and Jonah. As she does so, the front door is opening. And a man is entering. No, two men. Fred Pappert and Les Bruce. Roy and Jonah get back out of sight. All right, let's make this fast, Fred. Yeah, it won't take long. Yeah, this won't, maybe. We still got plenty more to do before the sun comes up. You remember the combination of the safe without looking it up? Yeah, sure, well, sure. Let's go to work, then. Roy and Jonah crouch in the shadows, listen and watch, without moving a muscle while the two outlaws turn the knob that will unlock the safe. They could spring the outlaws now, beat them here in the dark. Roy has a bigger purpose in view. The door to the safe opens. Uh, there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here's the papers. 
How about the badge? Yeah, I'm looking for it. Yeah, here it is. Good. Yeah, just a minute till I get this closed. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go. Yeah. Once this is done, I'll have a big load off my mind. Yeah, we got the right place to put them in, anyhow. Nobody will ever blame us in case the guy is wrong. Come on, Roy. Come on. Go ahead, Jonah. Let them get on past Dale before we move. Then we'll follow and find out where they got that badge in the first place and what they're using it for. Say, friends, are you hankering for something different for breakfast? Something that'll perk up the old appetite, send you off singing? Then you want Crinkles. Crinkles, Post's new rice cereal that's sugar-coated. Yes, for a breakfast treat, you can't beat rice. And candy-kissed rice is twice as nice. With crinkles heaped high and handsome in your breakfast bowl, you just add milk or cream. No sugar needed. Mmm, toasted rice in sugar and honey. Everyone who tries crinkles loves them. For snacks, too. Just grab a handful anytime you want. Like this little song says... You will have a circus eat of crinkles, poo-poo. Sugar-coated cereal crinkles, poo-poo. Candy-kissed rice, it's twice as nice. Yeah. Candy-kissed rice, it's twice as nice. So you will have a circus eat of crinkles, poo-poo. So, friends, why don't you try Post's new crinkles right away quick? Dale? Here I am, Roy. Are you okay? Les Bruce and Fred... They got the badge and some papers. We're trailing them, Dale. Look and see which direction they take, then ride for the sheriff's house. See if he's home yet. All right, Roy. Tell him to trail us. His authority may come in handy before this night's over. Roy and Jonah follow some distance behind the two outlaws, careful always to keep out of sight and out of sound. The moon is in the last quarter, and sometimes they have trouble keeping on the trail. But eventually, Bruce and Pappert lead them to the cliff directly below High Point Ridge. Easy trigger. Quiet there, fellow. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Roy, can you see the renegades now? Yeah, they're digging. Yeah, they come a mighty long way just to dig a hole and bury a badge. If that's what they're doing. Mm. And I wish they'd hustle. See, I wish they'd hustle. They're near a quarter after one. Gulp and Glory used to call at the ranch to see me at 7.30. I know. Of course, it'll probably be all right. She was always a great one for setting. She was, eh? Yeah. Used to sit on a log with the general and look up into his face for hours. <laughs> and the general would be gazing off towards the horizon with his hand stuck in his shirt. Yeah, Roy, he was a great one for gazing off toward the sunset, the general was. Never moving for old long stay. She... Hey, did you see that? Yeah, I saw it, Jonah. He threw the badge and some papers into the hole. Now's the time we make our move. Roy and Jonah leap toward the two outlaws. Bruce and Pappert are paralyzed with fear for a moment. Then Bruce recovers. Roy and Jonah are upon them now. Roy swings at Bruce. Jonah takes on Fred Pappert. The battle is wild, hard, vicious. Both Bruce and Pappert are fighting for their lives, for their freedom. Bruce is down. Now Roy's moved over to help Jonah. And he gets up there. Jonah swings hard. Pepper goes up into the air, then crashes down. Did you get him, Roy? Oh, did we get him. Hey, he not only bit the dust, they got a whole mouthful. Sheriff, I think your search for the missing law officer is over. He seems to have been buried here. Bruce and... Pappard killed him, didn't No, he? no, we didn't kill anybody. Where's Don Wallace? Did you kill him, too? Say, you'll have to excuse me, Roy, but I've got to get out of here. Oh, go ahead, Jonah. That's it, Sheriff. They killed him, and they moved in on his place of business. We'll tell you where Wallace went. He's in Bear City. We got his address. We didn't kill nobody, not even this lawman. An examination will tell us whether you did or not. Let's get the cuffs on and take him back to town, Roy. Sheriff, uh, maybe you'd better take him. Dale and I have a little more spying we want to do tonight. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Trigger. Oh, easy, buttermilk. Wait a minute, Roy. Well, what's the matter? Jonah, look at him. 
Yeah, looks like he must have lost his best friend. Jonah, is there anything wrong? Huh? Oh, what's the trouble, fella? Oh, yeah, that gulp and glory was here and left. Well, she'll be back when you explain what happened. Sure. Yeah. Well, I ain't explaining nothing to that woman. Just looky here. I said, looky here. You know what these things is? What? Bones. Turkey bones. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes, Dale. She cooked the general's turkey. She cooked it and ate it herself, right down to the last <laughs> pin feather. Oh, no. This... Oh, that, that, that gulping glory. Drat her for kingdom come <laughs> and back again. Dale? It looks as though the Double R Bar Ranch is going to have to make a little contribution here. I should say so. You know, we just can't leave the general without a turkey for Thanksgiving. Stay all night, stay a little longer. Dance all night, dance a little longer. Pull off the coat, throw it in the corner. Don't see why you don't stay a little longer. Now you ought to see my blue-eyed Sally She lives way down in Shinbone Alley The number's on the gate and the number's on the door The next house over is the grocery store Now what do you mean, you're blue-eyed Sally? I'll kick you in your Shinbone Pally My number's on the gate and my number's on the door And I don't live next to no grocery store Stay all night, stay a little longer Dance all night, dance a little longer Pull off your coat, throw it in the corner Don't see why you don't stay a little longer Join hands and circle to the south Let a little moonshine in your mouth Lose your hold from the grand field Back to the lady in the lead Swing your part a little bit hard now The man left in your own backyard And hurry up, boys, and don't be slow Sift your meal and mix your dough Stay all night, stay a little longer Dance all night, dance a little longer Pull off the coat, throw it in the corner Don't see why you don't stay a little longer Boy around a boy, girl around a girl, a girl around a boy, and a boy around a girl. Well, swing them in the center with a two-pair whirl, lead them up a two, and you buckle up four. Change the right hand, lady, for the left hand round, the partner for the right as she comes round. Now hurry up, boys, and don't be slow, they're chicken in a bread pan, picking up dough. Stay all night, stay a little longer, dance all night, dance a little longer. Pull off the coat, throw it in the corner, don't see why you don't stay a little longer. Chase the rabbit, chase the squirrel, and chase that pretty girl around the world. Now the possum, now the coon, and now that big boy around that room. Swing them in the center with a two fair word, lead them up two, and you buckle up four. To your homes and everybody swing, swing your honey around the ring. Stay all night, stay a little longer, dance all night, dance a little longer. Pull off the coat, throw it in the corner, don't see why you don't stay a little longer. Stay a little longer, dance all night, dance a little longer. Pull off the coat, throw it in the corner. Don't see why you don't stay. Stay a little longer. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet. Again, happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed. Directed by Tom Hargis. Script by Ray Wilson. Music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Bob Griffin, and Joe Duval. This is Art Ballinger speaking for... P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? 
Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you till we meet.